we were there and we watched uh, homeschooling become a crime. Um, you know, not not since Adolf Hitler had a government uh, made parents into criminals for deciding to educate their their own children. Hey everyone, this is Yvette Hampton. Welcome back to the Schoolhouse Rocks podcast. This week, we have an exciting episode for you. We are doing a replay of one of the sessions we did for this year's Homegrown Generation Family Expo. I know a lot of you are part of that, but for those of you who missed it, we have a couple of those sessions that were so good, and we just wanted to make sure that everyone got to hear them. And if you've already heard them, you're gonna be encouraged by listening again. You can now access the entire conference for only $20. You could go to homegrowngeneration.com and by signing up for this year's Homegrown Generation Family Expo, you'll have access still to the whole entire 2020 um, conference that we did as well. Um, the only thing that you missed was being able to interact live. But when you sign up for $20, you'll still have full access to the whole conference, as well as the swag bag and the, um, you know, all, all the fun stuff that came along with it. So you just missed that live interaction. And it was such a great conference. We have gotten such an incredible response from it. And we know that you'll enjoy it. Um, this is a session I did with Alex Newman. It was on the last day of the conference and it was called Rescuing our children. And oh my goodness, it's such a good session on what's going on in culture and how we can rescue our children from uh, just the dangers of what is swirling around them. And if you haven't heard Alex, he is incredible. So I know that you're going to enjoy this um, session. But before we do, I want to say thank you again to our sponsor, BJU Press Homeschool. You guys should not ever homeschool alone. You have a God-given calling to bring up your child to love God and to steward his creation. And BJU Press exists to help you be successful in that endeavor. Visit their website at bjupresshomeschool.com or call 1-800-845-5731 to connect with an experienced homeschool consultant. Now enjoy this episode. I am so excited about this session because... This is that we're going to talk about some things over the next hour that are a little bit difficult, I think, for people to hear sometimes, but so important. Sometimes it's hard to hear truth because sometimes it's easier and it's more comfortable to bury our head in the sand and pretend like the things that are happening around us are not actually happening. And um, that's not true. But here's the good part. We're going to talk about some difficult things that are going on in our world, in our school system, um, in our culture. But then at the end, we're going to bring hope. So stick around and don't feel like this is going to be one of those sessions where, oh, humdrum, the world is ending and everything in the world is awful because that's not the case. And do you know why that's not the case? Because we serve a very, very big God who loves us and who has an incredible plan for us and for our families. And so I'm super excited to have you guys back with us. Please let us know where you are watching from. And this is the question I would love for you to answer in the comments. If you can answer it in like 10 words or less, why do you homeschool? If, you, if you're homeschooling, why do you homeschool? If you're not homeschooling yet, why are you considering homeschooling? I'd love to know just your, your thoughts behind it, your reasoning behind it, because we all need to know our why. We need to know why we're doing this. It used to be years ago, and I think we've talked about this this week a little bit. Years and years ago, it was that people were homeschooling because they were they, they wanted to shelter their kids. They wanted to protect their kids. They wanted to keep their kids away from the world and they were running towards something. Now it's a little bit different in a lot of families because parents are running away from something, but they don't know what they're running away from. And they don't sometimes know why they're running away from it. They just have this check in their gut and they know that there's something not right. And they know that it's something they need to keep their kids away from, but they don't know exactly why. And they cannot put into words, they, they, they don't even really understand what's happening with our culture, with our public school system, sometimes with our private school system. So we're going to talk about those things today. And you're going to get tons of answers. Alex Newman is a good friend of ours. And, and I've said this before, and Alex, close your ears. He is one of the smartest guys I know. He might actually be the smartest guy I know and the smartest guy Garrett knows. So I don't just say that. My husband says the same thing as well. <laughs> he is just a wealth of information. I don't say that to uh, puff you up, Alex, but God has really gifted you with the ability to um, just dig into some important topics and then remember all the facts that go behind him. So really quickly introduce yourself to us, Alex. Tell us who you are um, and, and what you do. Well, thank you, Yvette, uh, for the very kind introduction. I'm, I'm humbled and 
Uh, you guys are amazing. I appreciate so much what you do. Uh, most importantly, I'm a, a servant of the Most High God, an adopted child of the King. And um, my day job, so to speak, I'm a journalist. Um, my, uh, my motto is Ephesians chapter 5, verse 11, have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them or expose them. Uh, and so all day, every day, six days a week, I get to expose and reprove evil. Um, and I, I feel very honored and blessed to do that. That's kind of my little niche within the body of Christ. Um, education has been uh, my passion for probably the last decade, maybe a little longer. Um, as, as soon as it struck me that this was the issue that transcended all the other issues, right? Why, are, why, why is our society collapsing? Why are our kids turning against their families? Why are our young people leaving the church? Why is our freedom being eroded? Uh, and, and the answer to all of these was because they're being indoctrinated, they're being sexualized, they're being dumbed down. Um, and they're not hearing the truth uh, from from the word of God. They're not hearing the truth uh, from from the biblical perspective on any of the issues of the day, whether that be family or mathematics or, or, or any of the key subjects. And so uh, that became a passion of mine. It's a focus of mine. I, um, a lot of my education work is, is as a volunteer. I did serve as a teacher for 12 years. I taught uh, advanced economics to some of America's brightest high school seniors. I now serve on the board of that school, uh, Freedom Project Academy. Uh, it's online classical Christian K through 12 school. Uh, wrote a book, Crimes of the Edu Educators, uh, with Dr. Sam <laughs> Blumenfeld. Uh, he spent 60 years studying this. So I, I learned a great deal of uh, what I've been blessed to learn about education from Dr. Blumenfeld. And I serve as the executive director of Public School Exit. It's, it's a volunteer job. I know it sounds fancy, but I don't draw a salary. Uh, our goal is to just work with parents and churches to try to get as many Christian families to abandon the public school system as quickly as possible. Amen. Uh, public School Exit is an incredible organization that's really working. And we've work, worked alongside of Public School Exit um, in many aspects to, you know, if, if we're going to pull kids out of the public school system, we have to give them an answer. They have to have somewhere else to go. And of course, our, our answer to that is home education, right? I mean, it's the best thing. Um, I know that you and your wife have chosen to home educate your boys. You have five boys, right? Yes, we do. Yeah. Um, and so I, I love that you've made that decision for your family as well um, to homeschool them. And I want to start there really quickly. Why did you make that decision? I mean, there's, you know, people would, would argue there's, you're, you're a well-educated man. There are lots of quote unquote good schools out there that you could send your boys to. Why did you choose to home educate yours? Uh, it, there, there's no simple answer to that, but uh, my interest really started when we were living in Sweden, uh, not on purpose. My wife is from there. I wouldn't have gone there deliberately. Um, wonder, <laughs> wonderful country, wonderful people. My wife is, is wonderful. But um, we were there and we watched uh, homeschooling become a crime. Um, you know, not, not since Adolf Hitler had a government uh, made parents into criminals for deciding to educate their their own children. Uh, so um, HSLDA reached out to me and they said, Alex, um, you know, this is a, a crisis. Would you be willing to write some articles about this? Or, of course, you know, I, I was freedom minded. Our, our kids were very young at the time. Uh, this was about a decade ago. So our oldest would have been, you know, one, two years old, uh, just a, a little kid. Um, and, and and it started getting really intense. Uh, I mean, the the government was sending armed police uh, to, to break down doors and kidnap children, uh, even families that were trying to escape. Uh, the, the one that was just horrifying beyond anything I had ever seen, uh, the Johansson family, uh, they were trying to escape. Uh, the government had criminalized homeschooling. They said they couldn't homeschool. So they got on a plane. They were going to go to India, which was the mother's homeland. And uh, the, uh, they were on a Turkish Airways flight and the government sent cops on there to grab the children, the, the child from the family, dragged them off the plane. And, and long story short, uh, the, the parents never uh, had their child return to them. And it was all over over homeschooling. Uh, and they tried to make up some reasons later. But uh, they said, you know, he didn't get all his vaccines and he didn't have, uh, you know, all the dental care that we think he needed. But it really it was about homeschooling. So that that's where my understanding and my involvement in the homeschool movement started. I went over to the uh, first global home education conference in Berlin uh, in 2012. That was organized mostly by the HSLDA and homeschool groups over there. Um, and, you know, as I was talking to my wife about it, like, you know, there, there's something to this. These families are extraordinary and the kids are so smart and they're so respectful. And, you know, we, we knew we weren't going to send the kids to government school. That, that went without saying. But that was my first exposure to homeschooling. And I think that's where we, we really decided, you know, when the kids get old enough to actually um, be confronted with this, uh, that'd be a really good option. And so we came to America, um, you know, just on, on a couple of visits, we realized, hey, we, we could homeschool in Florida without any problem. And so here we are. We want to thank all of our sponsors for making this show possible. BJU Press Homeschool, CTC Math, Apologia, and IEW. Without them, we wouldn't be able to do this. 
Visit the show notes for links to these great companies and thank them for supporting the Schoolhouse Rock podcast. We've talked a lot this week about culture, this culture war that we're in. We've talked about the authority of scripture. We've talked a lot about homeschooling. Um, we've talked about a lot of things. But I think people still sometimes are scratching their heads going, how did we get here? How did we get to where we are today in our culture, in the public school system, in the world? How did we get to the point where we're celebrating sin? And when we don't celebrate sin, we're somehow the enemy. Talk, talk, that, talk us through this whole process of why we are where we are today. Well, the short answer, Yvette, is because we stopped obeying God's word. We stopped obeying God's commands. Um, God has given clear responsibilities, clear authorities to different people, different institutions. Um, And the Bible is very clear about who is ultimately responsible for the education and the discipling of children. It's parents. Um, And, you know, maybe you could argue there's a supplemental role there for the church. Uh, Certainly not the civil government, not Caesar, right? Caesar's job description is defined very clearly throughout the pages of Scripture. Uh, Caesar's job is to punish evil to bring about justice. Now, Caesar is also a minister of God, right? Government officials are described actually as ministers of God, but in a different sense than say a pastor would be, in a different sense than a father or mother would be. Uh, and so what happened, um, you know, the, the first guy, looking back in history, the first guy I can ever find who, who seriously recommended that the government educate children was actually Plato. Um, and, and people who want to sound really sophisticated often quote Plato as if, you know, he was some sort of genius. The guy was a totalitarian. And we just need to be honest about that. He believed that philosopher kings should rule over all of us for our own benefit and that the government should train up two categories of people the philosopher kings to rule and the rest of us to submit um, to to the philosopher kings who apparently would know better uh, what we needed and how our lives should be run. Uh, And so obviously he was, you know, he was not a Christian. He was not coming from a biblical worldview. So you can't blame him for, you know, disobeying the scriptures, but obviously it was a bad idea. The the fascists in Sparta tried it out. It was a disaster. Um, You know, fast forward a couple thousand years and you get to uh, the early 1800s. There's a a guy, an actual communist before Karl Marx even came on the scene. Uh, His name was Robert Owen. And he set up this communist commune in Indiana. Uh, He totally rejected the word of God. He totally rejected God's commands on family, on private property, uh, on, on, you know, the the order for life, for family, for government, for society, for morality, all of these things he completely rejected and came to the conclusion that we needed to get rid of family, get rid of private property and all live together in a big, happy kumbaya commune with no Bible and with no um, individual rights or anything like that. So uh, obviously his commune failed very rapidly and he came to the conclusion that this was because these children have been raised in a Christian society uh, that emphasized uh, individual responsibility, individual agency, uh, individual rights, a relationship with your creator through Jesus Christ. And so he thought if we could get the government to take over this responsibility, then maybe we wouldn't have this problem. Maybe kids wouldn't grow up thinking from a biblical worldview and then we could actually have a collective utopian society. Uh, so he he set a process in motion, which I think ultimately led us to where we are today. Uh, He wrote a series of essays. Uh, Actually, the Prussian ambassador got a hold of these essays, took them back to the Prussian dictator, and they implemented them in Prussia. Uh, The Prussian dictator actually created the first ever that we can find a system of education of the state, by the state, and for the state. Um, They, you know, he had just uh, lost uh, a war and uh, was interested in basically brainwashing kids to be good little cannon fodder for uh, whenever they were needed. So he also established, uh, and we know this because of a whistleblower who was involved in this operation, he established a secret society is how the whistleblower uh, explained it. His name was Orestes Brownson, um, and he became a Catholic, and he felt very bad about his role in this society, and so he blew the whistle. He wrote essays and and a whole book about it. Um, And what he said was that the goals of this secret society immediately were getting people into legislatures who would support a government role for education, and then also shifting public opinion. Because at the time, in the early 1800s, the idea that the government should educate our children was just ludicrous. I mean, it was absolutely silly. Why why would we want the government to educate our children? We're educating them at home, and then if we need help, we'll send them to the church or to, uh, you know, a a college that was set up for the purpose of propagating the gospel. You know, most of our, in fact, almost all of our great universities were originally founded uh, to propagate the gospel. And so parents didn't see any need for the government to be involved here. Well, um, this secret society worked very diligently on this. And again, Oris Brownson blew the whistle. He said the actually the ultimate objective was to destroy Christianity. Uh, those are the words from the whistleblower who was involved in organizing uh, upstate New York on this. Uh, fast forward a little bit. This uh, system that was born in Prussia was then reimported back to Massachusetts by an individual called Horace Mann, who is often referred to today as the founding father of what passes for a public school system today in America. 
Um, he also rejected the Bible. He also rejected the truths of Scripture. He actually wanted to get Bible out of the classroom, which uh, at the time was was really unthinkable. You know, how, how do you have education without the most important book? I mean, that, that's that's really silliness. Um, so it, that didn't take off right away. But he did import the Prussian system back. They had to keep the Bible and, uh, you know, placate all those grumpy Christian parents. But um, right away, the quackery started. And after he was done in Massachusetts, he actually traveled all around the country and uh, like like a, an evangelist, uh, preaching the good news of salvation through government schools. Right? Uh, and, and if you read his writings in retrospect, they just look absolutely bonkers. He's like, we're going to get rid of 90% of the crimes by having children educated by government. Like, well, that worked out real well, right? Look around you, Detroit, Chicago, New York. Um, Obviously, that didn't work. But um, so he he laid the foundations. He set in motion this train where eventually all the states would start creating government school systems. Eventually, they'd start passing a compulsory attendance laws where you had to send your children. And, you know, it didn't happen overnight. Originally, it was like, you know, compulsory attendance for a month or maybe two months and, you know, just learn a couple of basics here and there. And that and out of that seed grew this monstrosity that we have today. Uh, And there's one more important character that I think needs to be mentioned, and that is John Dewey. Um, we, we talk extensively about him in the book, Crimes of the Educators. He was an actual communist in, in the truest sense of the term. I mean, he visited the Soviet Union. He loved the, the Soviet system, especially the Soviet educational system. We know because he wrote about it. You can go read his bonkers essays about how great the system was. No mention of the millions of people slaughtered and starved to death and the gulags and things. Uh, but he loved this this Soviet idea. His his model for America was um, it was actually in a book called Looking Backward, published in 1888. It was an extraordinarily influential book uh, in that era uh, about a socialist America where we'd get rid of private property and we'd move to a communist utopian society. Now, Dewey had one big difference from the traditional communist revolutionaries that we think of. Uh, they wanted revolution. They believed in you know violent overthrow of the system by the working class and that that would lead to this socialist system that would eventually pave the way to communism. Uh, Dewey took a different approach, and this comes through very clearly in his writings. Uh, he believed that the better way was to use the educational system to train up these children in a different way of thinking. They should think of themselves as part of the collective rather than individuals, right? Which is, of course, mm-hmm. what the Bible teaches. We're all individually responsible for our sins, for our actions, for what we do with our lives. Um, and so John Dewey um, took this system that Horace Mann had helped to build and and radicalized it and weaponized it even further. Um, he had he was actually the founder of what they believed to be a new religion. The, the human he was one of the authors and signers of the Humanist Manifesto. Him and thirty something other of his colleagues. And if you want to read where he was on religious issues, just read the the Humanist Manifesto, the first plank. Uh, we we believe the universe is self existing and not created. Uh, as you read on, he says we got to get rid of the private property. We've got to get rid of the profit mode. We've got to ensure equitable me- equitable distribution of the means of life. In other words, the means of production. Uh, so he was a communist in, in the truest sense of the term. He became the honorary life president of the National Education Association. He got a, a post at Teachers College at Columbia University, which to this day is the most influential teachers college in America. Uh, him and his cohorts got together, published textbooks that eventually would come to be used in almost all the major school districts in America. They trained up the next teachers, the, the next generation of principals. And um, from then, uh, the system just continued to get more and more radicalized. I I think another turning point was in uh, the early 1960s when the federal government first really took a major role in education. You had the Supreme Court strike down uh, prayer in schools. And the next year, they struck down Bible in schools. Um, One of the justices actually hit the nail on the head. He said what they're doing here is establishing the religion of secularism. Right. This is not neutrality with respect to religion. That was Justice Potter Stewart in his um, in his dissent in this case. And uh, that's exactly what happened. So uh, the Supreme Court kicked out God, kicked out Bible, kicked out prayer from what were at least nominally uh, Protestant schools. Uh, You certainly weren't learning a biblical worldview there. And obviously we had been very dumbed down. Uh, There's no way they could have gotten that through the Supreme Court and had the American people accept it if we hadn't been dumbed down. Um, And that leads us to today. Right. Each generation has gotten more and more radicalized with the school system leading that transformation. Uh, And now we're at the point where they're telling our kindergarten children that they could be castrated to become their true selves. And so we've come full circle. I hope you guys enjoyed this first session with Alex Newman. I'm sure you were encouraged because I know that I was. If you guys have not yet checked out our merch, um, go to our website. You can either check it out at homegrowngeneration.com or you can go to schoolhouserocked.com and we've got all kinds of fun stuff there. We've got t-shirts, we've got bags, we've got hats, we've got um, all sorts of fun things. So check that out. That's a great way to help support the Schoolhouse Rocked ministry. 
or you could always donate. You could do a one-time donation or you can do a monthly donation uh, to help support the ministry of Schoolhouse Rocked. You can do that by going to our website at schoolhouserocked.com. Have a great day and we'll see you back next time for part two of Alex's session. Often when I speak and I talk about the need to equip ourselves with a biblical worldview, and, I, and I'll mention to my audience that we got to recognize that around 90% of kids from church homes go to the public schools. And in those public schools, in a real sense, secularism, naturalism, atheism is the new religion of that system. The system itself is inherently atheistic because the system itself assumes right up front, that you don't need God to explain anything, that you can explain all things, biology, anthropology, astronomy, mathematics, uh, everything without God, without the Bible. That is the religion of humanism, naturalism, atheism. And for so many Christian parents, when we send our kids to that system, they're there for almost 40 hours a week, nine months out of the year, uh, and they're getting really hit with this atheistic worldview and all the reasons really the atheistic worldview must be true, and if that's true, then the Bible can't be true. 